Hey, what's up, guys? Mikey here. Hey, dude. Oh, hey, dude. You're just in time. What's up? Well, I got a question. How would it feel to have lived long enough to see your favorite TV show is still on the air to this day, but the creator passed away and the company that owns the show is doing something with it that the creator would not have liked or have wanted? That would feel great. Well, do I have a this to show you? No! All right. Camp Coral, SpongeBob's Under Years, everybody's least favorite SpongeBob spinoff due to it coming at a time when people were assuming that it goes against the late creator's vision and rules for the show. We all know about this Camp Coral spinoff, and ever since June 2019, it's been loaded with controversy. Roughly 8 months ago, I talked about everything we knew about Camp Coral at the time, and tried to piece together if the pitch for the Spongebob spinoffs happened before Steven Hillenburg, the creator, passed away due to ALS. Some time has passed, and clearly the fans' petition to cancel it didn't work. However, a sneak peek has come out on January 10th, 2021, and we saw a glimpse as to how it's gonna look. All of this I will get into, but first, a little prologue. Brian Robbins, the president of Nickelodeon as of October 2018, said he never liked how Spongebob basically stayed the same throughout its entire life. He gathered a room full of people and decided to delve into other parts of the show's universe and announced plans for Spongebob spinoffs in February 2019. Ever since the initial announcement of the Spongebob spinoffs, I was skeptical since animated spinoffs aren't very successful. When Camp Coral was confirmed to be in development, Paul Tibbet, a former crew member, stated that Hillenburg would have hated this. That immediately killed my interest in watching the spinoff. As time passed and we saw this screenshot, I started to think it was decently made and not just a lazy attempt to cash in on a successful popular property. Then the sneak peek came out on January 10, 2021, and you'd think I would have watched it. Nope. I had friends over that day and we played Super Smash Bros Ultimate and Mario Party 4 and they were here during that sneak peek, so I didn't watch it. I did watch it the next day and watched a few reviews of the clip, but I still have very conflicting opinions on it. I was interested in how the animation would play out, and after watching it, I got all the answers I need for that. The basic premise of this clip shows a young Spongebob really wanting to catch his first jellyfish, but things keep getting in his way. I'm not going to go super in depth on the plot like I do when I talk about actual episodes, I'm just going to talk about what I think about the clip. The first thing I want to talk about is the art style. Ever since Camp Coral was revealed, we knew it would be animated in CGI while the normal show is 2D. I know people who don't really like when a long running show changes its animation, and I can understand that. I felt that way for a little while. Of course, the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run is animated in CGI, but that's a one time thing, not a permanent change. Even though Camp Coral is still Spongebob related, it's still its own thing and not a part of the actual main series, which is what a true Spongebob fan cares about. Before the sneak peek came out, the footage looked very unfinished. When the clip actually surfaced, the footage did look better. I think it looks fine for what it is and the animation itself is very clean, but it does have off lighting. I do have to say, something about the designs and animation of the jellyfish in particular don't really click with me and I can't really explain it. The second thing is the characters. Obviously the characters look different, but that's to be expected since they're younger versions of themselves in this show. The facial expressions of the characters do feel like Spongebob, especially with how expressive the post-movie post-sequel seasons have been. However, I personally feel that it would have been better if the character models here were the same as the character models from the Camp Coral scenes during the aforementioned movie. I feel it would be a bit easier to digest since they're a part of the main series. Since they already existed in the movie, I just find it odd they decided to tweak them even more for the spin-off. Personally, my favorite part was this shot of Baby Pearl and her mobile. That's cute. Third, the writing. The writing itself is what I can appreciate the most. To an extent. 
The clip feels like it popped out of an episode from seasons 10, 11, 12, or 13. This is most likely because some of the crew members on the show from those seasons are also working on Camp Coral. Since those writers have been working on the show for a while, they got the feel of how to write for Spongebob. I have to get this out of the way. I've heard some people attacking the crew members for working on Camp Coral, and I have one thing to say to those people. STOP! The crew members are working on this show because Nickelodeon is making them. The show only exists because of Brian Robbins' input. If you want to be mad at anybody, be mad at Nickelodeon, not the Spongebob staff. With that out of the way, the writing does not feel like they're taking Spongebob and just turning it into those generic, bland kids shows like Paw Patrol. It feels like they're doing the same style of writing, but in a different environment. It feels like they're just writing in a way to appeal to any age, which is what Spongebob was like when it first came out in 1999. However, some of the jokes here I wasn't a fan of, particularly the clip where Patrick kept stalling the jellyfish event for his own forgetfulness. It felt more irritating than funny. Finally, the biggest issue is how it goes against the official lore of the show. There may not be a lot of lore to the show on the surface, but when you've seen every episode like myself and watch a clip of a spin-off that goes against almost everything established in the core series, there's a lot more lore than you may think. I've gone over how this goes against how Spongebob met Squidward, Sandy, and Plankton, and how the movie itself shows a different way of how Spongebob met Gary compared to the series, so I'm not going to go over it again. In this clip, Mr. Krabs and Mrs. Puff are shown in this setting as camp counselors. Of course, you could make the argument that this was their last job before they went on to the jobs we know of in the core series, but that's wrong too. In episode 100, Krusty Krab Training Video, Mr. Krabs acquired a bankrupt retirement home and changed its name from the Rusty Crab to the Krusty Crab. And in episode 240, Truth or Square, the Krusty Crab is 11 years old. How old is Mr. Krabs? Both of these examples go to show how long Mr. Krabs has been in the restaurant business for. Also, in Truth or Square, the Krusty Crab existed while SpongeBob's mom was pregnant with SpongeBob. Cam Coral, in the movie, implies that the Krusty Krab didn't exist while Mr. Krabs was at the camp, which was after Spongebob was born. Confused? Now, let's talk about Mrs. Puff. While the camp counselor scenario seems more likely for Mrs. Puff, this still goes against the normal show. Spongebob is heard calling Mrs. Puff by her normal name here. However, in episode 59, No Free Rides from season 2, Mrs. Puff worries about letting Spongebob graduate when he wasn't ready. When his parents give him a boat, Mrs. Puff worries that she'll get caught and considers moving to a new city, change her name, and start a new boating school. Then, she says, not again. Meaning this happened before, which also means that her surname is not Puff. This is further supported in episode 497, Lighthouse Louie from season 12. Here we can see a newspaper that says, deranged boat teacher makes getaway, which is more proof that she changed her name from to Puff and that she did not originally live in Bikini Bottom. What else are you hiding, Mrs. Puff? Also, even though Mr. Krabs and Mrs. Puff didn't interact in this clip, I assume they still knew each other in this environment, which also disregards how they met and started dating in episode 72, Krusty Love, and everybody loves watching them meet and date. During my last Camp Coral discussion, I said that it didn't make sense why Mr. Krabs and Plankton are in this setting here since they're much older than the other characters, even Squidward. While Mr. Krabs has a reason, the clip still doesn't explain why Plankton is here. When it comes out, we'll probably get an explanation for this. I do have to say, Pearl being a baby here makes sense because she's a teenager in the main show and presumably younger than characters like Spongebob and Patrick. Her mom is also nowhere to be seen, so that something that remains true to the original series. That's all I have to say about specific aspects of the clip. Now here's a few general things. Going back to what I said about the writing, while I do appreciate the characters are written relatively consistent compared to the actual show, I would personally appreciate if they had some new dynamics in this spinoff. For example, maybe show Squidward and Sandy interacting with each other and having more of a friendship than they did in the actual show. Something like that would be a bit more appreciated since this is a new setting, so they should try new things for this new show. Additionally, since the episode this clip is from is about Spongebob trying to catch his first jellyfish, I feel something like this could have been neat to see in the main show. 
Obviously, they couldn't make an episode where SpongeBob attempts to catch a jellyfish for the first time since he's been shown jellyfishing since episode 3, Tea at the Tree Dome. However, it could still work as just a portion of an actual SpongeBob episode. Picture this. There would be an episode where the Krusty Krab would have to relocate to another town for one reason or another. SpongeBob would be sad about this news since he loves Bikini Bottom and doesn't want to leave. So the day before he would have to move, he would visit all of his other favorite places and recall some of his favorite memories before he leaves Bikini Bottom. One of those places would be Jellyfish Fields and he would reminisce on the first time he ever caught a jellyfish and there would be a flashback of a young SpongeBob catching his first jellyfish. Nickelodeon, are you hiring? Of course, at the end of the episode, the Krusty Krab would be staying where it was, but everything I just went over goes to show that Brian Robbins and Nickelodeon didn't need to create an entire spin-off just to make an episode showing a young SpongeBob catching a jellyfish for the first time. So those are my thoughts on the sneak peek of Camp Coral. While I don't think the clip is abysmal, I don't really know how to feel about it. While it's still unknown how much Hillenburg actually knew about the spinoff and if Nickelodeon made these decisions before his passing or not, I still think my theory holds up. Maybe he changed his feelings about spinoffs during the last three years or so of his life and never told Paul Tibbet. Maybe he did know about Cam Coral being in the third movie, but never expected it to be its own thing outside of the movie. But the fact that Nickelodeon still didn't share any of this news until a few months after Hillenburg's passing is something I just can't get over. And no matter how this turns out, there may just be that one little thing holding me back. Well, the spinoff is coming out on Paramount Plus on March 4, 2021, so we don't have much longer to wait. Hi, it's me again. I just have to say this real quick. The movie was originally supposed to come out on May 22, 2020 here in the States, but was pushed back to August 7, and then was pulled from theaters entirely, but still released internationally everywhere else in the world before here in America the country where Spongebob is made and produced. And in the US, the movie doesn't come out until March 4th, 2021. On Paramount Plus, not even in theaters. It comes out 10 months in the US after it was originally supposed to come out. Tell me how that makes any sense at all. While it's absolutely ridiculous waiting this long for the movie, I kind of shrugged off waiting for Camp Coral since I didn't plan on watching it. Now that some time has passed, I might actually give it a watch but that won't happen immediately as it comes out. I'll probably wait for reviews and then give it a try and form an opinion, but it's still not a priority at the moment for me. I know I whined a lot about that clip, but that's just how I feel about it, especially since I've had my doubts since the beginning. This is just my opinion, please respect that. I'm not trying to change anybody's mind or dampen anybody's mood. If you're looking forward to the spin-off, just ignore what I'm saying and watch it, but... At least we don't have to wait much longer for it, right? Eh? No? Okay. I better check on my friend, though. You okay, bro?